All right, good morning, everybody. This is the White Plains City School District reopening committee meeting for Wednesday, December 16th. Thanks everybody for joining us. A couple of uh, just really quick updates. Um, we are, again, we're gonna wait for, to hear an update today from Governor Cuomo to see if there's any changes in our region. The good news is it looks like um, based on the, the numbers that we're seeing right now, um, that we potentially might not be designated as a, a, a yellow, orange, or red zone um, this week. Uh, I can tell you that um, while we still had uh, COVID-19 or issues with COVID-19, obviously this week, we, you know, we have them every week, um, we did, it did seem to slow a bit in the buildings. Um, we, we, we do still have, unfortunately, uh, many folks in quarantine, um, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're always happy to, uh, to have small victories. So that's a good thing. The big, um, the big conversation, the big item on people's minds right now, especially our kids, uh, is the upcoming or the impending winter storm, which is predicted to hit this afternoon throughout the night um, and could drop, uh, I think what I'm seeing right here, anywhere from uh, two to four inches, or I'm sorry, nine to 13 inches overnight and another two to four inches tomorrow morning. So a pretty significant snowfall if it comes through as it is. We have decided, we, ha we have decided that if it snows, tomorrow will be a traditional snow day in the White Plains City School District. That means no classes, no logging into iPads, no, no none of that, no, uh, not, none of that will be taking place tomorrow. Our children will be off um, and they will be able to enjoy a snow day. We do have uh, for the future, the option of, of the, the New York State Education Department pilot program, which would allow us to be able to shift to remote learning due to inclement weather. And that's definitely something that we're gonna, we're gonna keep as an option. Um, it, you know, a lot of times you get, you get winter weather where there's ice and there's sleet and it's, kind of a, an iffy scenario and that's a great option for um, those those types of uh, those types of scenarios to be able to have remote learning for our kids and not have to get them out on the roads um, and for our faculty and staff members to travel as well so it's great to have options uh, but for this week for tomorrow should the snow come as it's being predicted it will um, our children will have a snow day we are anticipating that we'll be able to announce to our community by 4 p.m. this afternoon. Pretty confident that this storm is gonna come the way, it's, the way it's being predicted. And we wanna make sure that we're letting everybody know as soon as possible. So I would say the window will be between 4 and 6 p.m. depending upon the weather patterns. Uh, we have to watch uh, how, depending upon how much snow we get, we have, just so everybody's aware, we have a number of our um, maintenance and custodial team members in quarantine. Um, so we are going to need to uh, watch and see what our capabilities are, depending upon um, the timing of the storm, depending upon how much uh, you know snow falls. We're going to do everything that we possibly can to get uh, everything cleaned up and ready to roll for Friday morning. Um, but just be aware, right? We're we're kind of uh, it's always uncertain when you're dealing with or unpredictable when you're dealing with weather. Um, that if a scheduling change is required for Friday we'll let our community know as soon as possible as well. And we'll be in uh, close contact with, with uh, all of our maintenance and custodial team members um, throughout the time. So that's kind of what we're, we're thinking about right now. Um, I do wanna just share a message from uh, Rosemary, President Rosemary Eller. She has a work meeting right now. She uh, said, sorry that, you know, she's gonna try and pop in when she can, uh, but she wanted to thank everybody uh, for all of your hard work. And she also wanted to wish on behalf of the Board of Education, everybody a very, very happy holiday. We don't have a reopening committee next week. It is hard to believe, but next week is already the holiday recess. I, I cannot believe it. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll forego next week's meeting and we'll pick it up again after the recess. Uh, any updates from our uh, committee chairs? Deb Hand, any update? Yeah, I just wanted to share a couple of things. Um, the first thing was elementary school. We're working on mid-year assessments and what that will look like. I know our teachers had asked if we could streamline that a bit so that we could spend more time instructionally with our children and a little bit less time assessing. So we've been working with the coordinators and the instructional coaches and the principals on that. That's going really well and we'll put a plan together and get that out there. I think the other thing that we've been talking a lot about over the past two weeks is our Wednesday schedule. I know that there's, um, you know, 
mixed, um, mixed uh, understanding maybe of what Wednesdays are and why we structured Wednesdays the way that we did. But, um, you know, we've been talking about the need for Wednesdays and although there are some parents who are very concerned that their children aren't coming in on Wednesdays or that we don't have, you know, a full day of synchronous learning on Wednesdays. I wanna remind everybody that we have a morning of synchronous learning and an afternoon of asynchronous learning. And during that afternoon, our teachers have the opportunity to collaborate and plan together. They work on their video recordings. They do small group check-ins with children. There's just a menu of, um, of work that needs to get done on Wednesday and everything can't get done when you're Zooming with groups of children um, throughout the day. So I'm just gonna ask a couple of the members of the subcommittee to share a little bit. And I see Rena here, and I know that you weren't at the subcommittee meeting yesterday because you had class, but would you share from your parent, from your student perspective, you know, how you feel about Wednesdays? Yeah, um, I think all the students really appreciate Wednesdays because it's a time for us to um, catch up on any work. And then it's also a time for us to review with our teachers, ask them questions, they give us feedback on our work and kind of just like, just review what we've done for the week and get ready for the second part and any um, things like that. Thanks, Rena. thank you. And then when we met with the principals, I know that Daisy and Ernie were willing to share a little bit. So if you wanted to share, you know, out so that everybody that's watching can understand how you utilize Wednesdays. Daisy, you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Go ahead, Ernie. Okay, so, so what we're seeing here, we being the administrative team here at Highlands are seeing is that Wednesday afternoon is certainly not an afternoon off for, for our teachers or our students. Um, our teachers are working on student outreach with support staff so that there's more con, sorry, so that there's more contact and, um, you know, helping students navigate this new process um, they're, they're collaborating to adapt lessons that haven't, you know, that this, they've done in the past in some cases, but need to be adapted to this new environment, which, um, which also kind of, kind of, they then need to gain the technology knowledge to do that. Many of them have that and have developed it over the last few years. Those who don't have the knowledge that they that they'd like to have to implement lessons the way they'd like to do in this environment, or um, are participating in PD to gain that knowledge, um, and they're certainly collaborating with each other to continue providing great lessons and also to modify the assessments that are unique to this environment. Along with, you know, as a former teacher, I, I find it hard to imagine having to respond to um, the huge number of student responses, whether they're test results or uh, test, you know, whether it's the re response to a test or a quiz or even exit tickets and class bulletin boards. So I think that, you know, I, I think it, Wednesday afternoon is a valuable resource for both our teachers and our students. Thank you, Ernie. Hey, Ernie. So here at ESV, we're doing um, a lot of the similar things with the, the, the planning time and making sure that teachers have an opportunity to collaborate. But in addition to that, we, we can't forget about uh, making sure as kids have the opportunity to connect with each other. That's almost just as important um, as the academic piece, making sure that, they, that we focus on the social emotional health of our students. So we have provided um, opportunities for them to connect with each other in an informal way through the Tiger Chats. And we're also launching a book club for students. So the afternoon provides us the opportunity where the kids are all available at the same time, despite what team they might be on. Um, so that way they can make connections with each other. That's something that they have really been asking for. Um, and it's been, it's been working out really well. Thanks, Daisy. Thank you. Jennifer, did you wanna share a little bit from a coordinator's perspective? Yeah. I. I uh, what I shared yesterday at our subcommittee meeting was uh, in a typical year, um, our elementary teachers engage in a lot of professional learning and professional development throughout the school year. Some of that occurs during the school day where we might relieve teachers of a teaching responsibility for an hour or two and have subs in the classroom so that the teachers can work together on some type of learning. 
And we have we are not doing any of that this year, right? So all of our professional learning for the most part has to occur on Wednesday afternoons, a little bit on Wednesday morning sometimes, but mostly on Wednesday afternoon. So we we still do need to move forward with our curriculum work and our learn our professional learning both about technology, but still just curriculum, ongoing curriculum issues in math and and ELA and science and social studies. So we are using that time in the afternoons for uh, very targeted uh, coaching support, uh, small group support, individual support for teachers. So, and, and what we're doing by doing that is not taking the teacher away from the students um, and all of the responsibilities of the hybrid learning environment on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays where they're really fully engaged with their children every day. Thanks, Jennifer. And I think Laura wants to share a little bit from the elementary perspective. Sorry. In addition to what's been said, what's also been a challenge in the hybrid schedule is that we are not able to have grade level meetings on a, a biweekly basis as we typically have because the prep schedule doesn't allow for us to do that anymore. So it is an opportunity for grade levels to get together, to collaborate, to do some planning, and to um, perhaps share responsibilities across content areas if they choose to do that, or just share resources. Our instructional coaches offer a menu of professional development opportunities if people are feeling like they need more support with a technology piece or if they need more support in a TC unit. Um, there's all these things that are available and they can really cater their afternoon to get their needs met. Um, additionally, we um, have taken that opportunity to offer professional development for our teaching assistants who have really been instrumental in supporting the remote learning environment, um, whether it's through check-ins with students or really guiding them through activities on the different platforms when they're struggling technologically, the teaching assistants have been able to support them in that. So um, it's really just a time that we've kind of used as a catch-all for all the other things that can't get done during the regular school day. Thanks, Laura. Um, does anybody else want to share from a building perspective? Kara, Kara, would you like to share from a teacher perspective? Me. So I have about six pages of notes about the ways that um, Wednesdays are used, but I really appreciate all those all those specific comments about how Wednesdays are being utilized because it's not a shorter instructional day, right? The, it's a a shorter live teaching period, but our instructional day isn't us talking all day anyway. So I just wanted to, you know, highlight that the way that we deliver instruction has drastically shifted. So our work's kind of like an iceberg. So the instructional piece is visible, but the hours of planning and coordinating with colleagues and creating, you know, tech friendly lessons, giving feedback, making videos, doing outreach, finding time to connect with small groups of kids and looking for new content go way beyond our work day. Um, this time is essential for us to be able to do that work together. Um, you know, there was a great elementary list that was just shared, another great secondary list, but I just wanna highlight that this time is being used in a, a multitude of ways. So whether it's the grade level meetings, rethinking assessments, learning a new skill, meeting with a student, listening to the recordings of elementary children read and giving that meaningful feedback because the time is not there with hybrid learning. So just emphasizing that, knowing that in addition to Wednesdays, we're still putting in three to six hours on top of our work day. So it's just really helping us get the job done. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ricca. Hey, thanks, Dr. Hannon. Thanks for everybody. And I think, you know, this is that was an important piece to hear um, from our colleagues who were in the classrooms, in the buildings, in the departments. Um, we, we do get questions about the Wednesday schedule and they're understandable questions. Uh, just on, on Monday evening, we, we received questions uh, from parents and guardians, good ones, um, understandable. And, and, you know, I think he, seeing and hearing from the professionals about what is going into the day um, in the on the back end where you wouldn't normally see that um, hopefully is is uh, helpful to our community members when they when they view this video. If folks are having different experiences and they're not feeling 
like their children are experiencing what is being described. Uh, always, uh, we're, we're always encouraging uh, moms and dads and guardians to reach out to us, reach out to the teachers so that we can support and we can help. Um, all feedback is good. Uh, all, all, you know, everybody giving us input is great. Um, and then it's important, I think, also for them to receive answers and, and to hear uh, from our professionals. So thanks, Dr. Hand. I appreciate that. And thanks, everybody, for, uh, for giving us some insight there. You're welcome. And, and the secondary coordinators are also meeting with their departments. They met with them last week and this week. And they're talking about the way that Wednesdays are structured, not only for the teacher's experience, but also for the student's experience. So, you know, again, appreciate the feedback and we're working on making sure it's as strong as it possibly can be. Thanks. Uh, updates from uh, finance and operations, uh, Dr. Vaccaro Teich. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, the operations subcommittee met on the 11th and, you know, our focus was testing and um, gearing up for that potential um, that we might be uh, doing testing. We got our 1500 um, Binex now tests and I'm not sure that Dr. Ricka mentioned it, but he did do um, a fabulous demonstration and demo uh, with nurse Maggie. Um, of how simple it is to actually uh, do the swab test and the 15 minutes that it takes to read the results. So I know that's going to be going out if it didn't already go out with a whole bunch of FAQs that um, you know folks put together about the testing. Um, and Maggie also did a supplemental uh, entry on the website just to kind of further explain quarantine and isolation. Um, so all good stuff is happening as far as that and trying to just anticipate everyone's questions and concerns. Um, a reminder went out again about the, you know, providing consent um, because we do have to, if we are in orange, we'll have to do 10% bi-weekly, 15% if we're red bi-weekly. Um, so we just want to make sure we have all that in, in the hopper so that we can easily move forward and test and keep kids and staff in district. And I think that is really about it. Um, besides the fact that everybody's been doing the snow dance <laughs> and is excited and we're not talking about COVID. <laughs> so anyone from operations, any comments, any updates? Feel free. Well, thanks, Anne. And uh, to be sure, Maggie was the star of that, that uh, video, not me. Uh, <laughs> Maggie, um, thanks for, for everything that you're doing. Any updates from health services for our community, Mags? Um, no, um, the good thing is that we're not ha having as many po positives this week. And the positives that we are ha having um, is very little qu quarantining you know, done. Um, so that's a good thing for this week. Um, so I'm very ha happy that we had that little bit of a break so that we don't have so many ca cases. And, and we do still have them and we're gonna have them, um, but the qu quarantining was at, at a minimum this week. So that was good and people are starting to come back. So that was also really good. And, um, and for me to go on, on video wearing full PPE, I really love this community, so <laughs> I did it for you guys. <laughs> well, thank you, Maggie. Um, and uh, as this is the, the last reopening committee prior to the holiday recess, we just want to continually remind and reinforce community members to, to remember that the actions when we're outside of school have a direct connection to our ability to function in school, so traveling over the holidays, if we're traveling, uh, if we're meeting up with family members, do uh, follow the recommended uh, health safety guidelines. Do make sure that if uh, you travel out of state and we have to quarantine for a period of time before returning to school, all of those things are followed. And um, just making sure, again, best practices, right? Physically distancing, hand washing, um, making sure that we're getting enough rest. Uh, all, all, of, all of those things are really important. And, as we move through the holiday recess, we wanna make sure that uh, when, when our students come back to us in the new year, um, that they're happy and healthy and ready to move uh, into 2021. And it is gonna be a good year. Uh, the vaccines have landed. 
Um, they are uh, beginning to be distributed. My hope, and we're lobbying for this, is that education uh, is uh, going to be very quickly followed by healthcare frontline uh, workers um, so that uh, we can make sure that um, our, our faculty and staff members are uh, protected as quickly as possible uh, to get back to uh, what we love to do, which is having all of our children with us all the time. Any, uh, any, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, any other updates from anybody? I just wanted to mention that um, I did get a whole uh, update on the vaccine and how they're going to distribute it from New York State. And they said that we would be phase two right after all of the um, healthcare wor workers and the frontline wor workers. So that's going to be a great thing that the schools are going to get va vaccinated and we will be the second in line to, to get that. So that was exciting to see. That, that is exciting. Maggie, we're going to make a video where you're giving me the vaccine too. <laughs> okay. Any other questions uh, or, or concerns, uh, thoughts, recommendations? Listen, you, you, this is the last meeting, the last reopening committee meeting of tw 2000 or, or 2020. You have done an amazing job. You brought us from a place in March and April where we didn't even know what we were dealing with all the way to where we are right now in a totally new world through a pandemic and at the same time supporting um, our community members as as closely as we could and we owe all of you a real huge thanks so uh, on behalf of the board of education on behalf of our kids and everybody thank you to this reopening committee uh, you've done amazing work and uh, you're not done uh, but you will get a, a break next week <laughs> thanks everybody have a great holiday. See ya.